Okay, guys. So, you know, I've been sick. I have bronchitis. Um, I haven't been sleeping much because all I do is cough. And um, hopefully you guys have been working on your poster, but I do want to start you off on part four. So hopefully today you were given the part four vocab to start put to put that in your notebook and to start putting those definitions in there and the notes to put in there. And then you can start filling that in as you're watching this first part of the presentation. I'm only gonna do half. I will do the other half on Friday, all right? So what I want you to do is we're gonna talk about biogeochemical cycles. Bio life, geo is referring to the earth and chemical as it speaks for itself, chemical and the cycles they go through. And if I can get this advanced. So the first one is the water cycle. The water cycle is pretty easy, which is why I feel I can do this with you guys. <coughs> and the water cycle is the movement of water among the oceans, the atmosphere, the land, and the living things, which is why I asked you, I told you guys, if you're doing a water ecosystem, you had to have some land. If you have land, you needed to have some water because you're going to put this on your poster. So for the water cycle, we can define in terms of, let me move myself out of the way. All right, precipitation. You guys know what precipitation is. That's water that falls to the ground, whether it's solid, liquid, um, whether it's snow, sleet, rain, precipitation. All right, when things fall out of solution, we call that a precipitation, a precipitate. So, and that's what's happening, right? You have this gaseous atmosphere and you have liquid or, or we go to a solid, you have water that falls out from being a gas into a solid or, or liquid precipitation. All right, runoff. Runoff is the flow of water on the ground surface when excess rainwater. We see that and we, we build our neighborhoods and everything around that. We have, we have our drain storms, we have our gutters, we have our sewers. And so when the soil is full, and we've seen that in the last few years when we've had so much rain, we have this runoff. And eventually that runoff will lead into a body of water, right? It goes into a creek, a river, and then eventually a lake. And eventually all those lakes drain into the ocean. So accumulation is where that water, that runoff goes to. So like I just talked about those bodies of water here. Infiltration is when the water soaks into the soil from the ground level. And it's important we know that different substances, right? When you have a sandy substance, you know, we can, it's porous. And it can soak up a lot of water versus clay does not. Clay does not absorb much water. And so when we talk about infiltration, it's how much water gets down into below the ground and into that. We like to look at that water aquifer where our groundwater comes from, where we get our drinking water. Uh, plant uptake. So we know in the water in the soil that through osmosis, osmosis, os Osmosis is just the movement of water and plants will pull that water in through their roots. We talked about that into the plant. Um, and that is called osmosis, that pulling the water from the soil up into the plant itself. Transpiration. Now we lose water out the leaves. We kind of, I always talk about it. It's kind of like plant sweat. And so when that sun is baking out there in the summer, the water gets evaporated off the leaves and it goes back into the atmosphere. It goes from that liquid to a gas and that's called transpiration. And evaporation, and that would be, again, you know that when we have water that's sitting outside, when it heats up, it goes somewhere. It doesn't just disappear, right? It evaporates as the heat warms it up into a gas. Condensation is where, and you guys know that, in fact, my glass here has a little bit of condensation on it here because I've got steam going on in my house for my bronchitis. And so I've got a lot of water vapor. We do that in the summer, right? It's humid. We have a lot of water vapor in the air and then it sits on colder items as that water vapor hits those colder items. 
it turns from that gas, that steam into liquid. And that is called condensation. So the movement of carbon from, ooh, carbon cycle. We're not gonna do the carbon cycle. All right, so you need to be able to define these terms. You need to be able to put them on your poster. Here is a picture of the water cycle. So you need to have something like this on your poster. We have our evaporation. As the sun evaporates that water, it turns it from a liquid to a gas. And then in, when it gets away from that heat source, it gets up into the cold atmosphere, it condenses and forms clouds. And eventually, if we have too much moisture up there, it, it falls out of solution as precipitation. Then we have runoff and accumulation. We have accumulation here. And then we have that uh, infiltration where we go down and there's our aquifer down here, our groundwater. And then we have, again, some transpiration, which is also going to put that water vapor back up into the atmosphere. So you need to make sure you have this all labeled and put on your drawing side of your poster. So you have plenty to do today. You have your vocab, you have your notes to fill in, and then you have for the water cycle, and then you have the, your posters, you can start putting the water cycle on. And then tomorrow we're going to do the carbon cycle. All right. Hope I, I do miss you guys and I will see you on Friday pending a negative COVID test. All right. I will see you guys later. If you have any questions, I am checking my email from time to time. All right. Bye.